Hi guys, it's me again, Grandmaster Levan Aroshidze, and today we're gonna have another video lesson. Mm, uh, today's subject is uh, end game with the different colored bishops. Uh, these type of end games are most uh, irregular ones, uh, most paranormal kind of end games because um, the, the 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 regular rules, the normal chess rules. Uh, very often simply are not are not working here. So what I mean, I mean that sometimes the player may have a uh, few extra pawns, uh, but still we could have the dead draw at the board. It will not be possible to win the game. Uh, so for this type of end games, the most important thing is um, the the idea, the concept of the defensive plan. Uh, the philosophy of the playing plan, the structure. Uh, this, these things are much more important than the material advantage. Uh, and, um, well, what would be the defensive plan, the defensive idea, most important idea to save these type of end games with a material disadvantage? Of course, we have to try to use that the bishops are uh, the different colored ones and we have to try to fix the opponent's pawn structure on the color of our bishop. So if we will be able to do this, then as the opponent has uh, his bishop but it's the different color, uh, then that bishop will not be able to help him to progress with the pawn structure, to make a breakthrough or just advanced pawns. Uh, okay, now after this little review, Let's uh, take a look at the concrete practical examples to um, to realize better and understand what exactly are happenings in these type of end games. So now we see the end game with the, when the white uh, is just two pawns down, but uh, there are different type of uh, different colored bishops at the board. Still, we may hope that we will be able to survive here and save the half point. So what we have to do for this? Uh, it's obvious we have to fix opponent's pawn chain on the white squares, on, this, on the color of my bishop to make his uh, bishop just useless. But uh, to achieve this uh, goal we have to force opponent to push e6 pawn to e5. Uh, okay, how we, we are able to do this? Maybe bishop g6, trying to play bishop f7, uh, but the problem of this move is that uh, just black king comes in time. Bishop f7, king d6, and then winning plan is very simple as black, black, black was able to keep his pawn chain flexible, keep his pawn on e6. Now he will play f5, then probably he will put his king on f6, to, to support his pawns on the king side and then step by step he starts advance the pawn chain and we we are just helpless here. Okay, we can sacrifice bishop for two pawns but still Blake will have a lot of pawns at the board. Okay, what else? Maybe bishop b3 trying to play c5. It could be a very clever idea but unfortunately opponent has very nasty answer here, bishop c5. And he just he just blocks the pawn, and there's no way to force e6 e5 move. And again, king comes in time. And now, of course, we everybody realized uh, what is the correct move order. First of all, we have to push c5. Of course, black needs to take it. No other options. And now we can attack the pawn. So it's, it looks like funny because we are just now three pawns down, three pawns down. But after bishop e6, king c7, king e4, it's just a draw. All we need to do is just to move our bishop on f5 and on g4. And black bishop is useless to help uh, in, in, in order to, to, to progress on the, on the king side. Uh, he just th th that bishop cannot do anything for the white squares. So this is the main concept of these type of end games. Okay. So now let's take a look at the another example. This is the famous theoretical position, and it, 
everybody must just know this type of uh, ending. Uh, for example, personally, I have saved few games in my practice thanks to this position, th thanks to knowing this idea. Uh, so, how White is able to make a draw here? Obviously, he needs to stop um, this pawn at once, d4, d3. Uh, okay, of course, Black is not going to play uh, c4, c3, because if he will do this, then we are able to block his pawn chain on the light squares, and this is what we were talking about. So, if, if our opponent is a smart player, he will try to push his pawns on the white squares and support bishop with the bishop the dark squares. Okay? Uh, so we have two possible, two possible moves here. First is um, bishop g6, trying to stop d3, and another, another one is bishop e2, of course, but the same idea. So the question is, which one is the correct move? Because one of them is making a draw, and another one is losing. Uh, well, the right answer is uh, bishop e2. This is the move that makes the draw. But first of all, let's try to, to understand what happens if he plays bishop g6 and why now black is able to win. Okay, uh, now let's think a little bit. What could be the winning idea here for black? Okay, so if d3, of course white will just sacrifice bishop for those two pawns and it's easy draw and if c3 as we mentioned is just an unbreakable blocking structure so what could black do here obviously he still needs to try to advance d3 but to prepare it he needs some support okay bishop obviously cannot uh, support this advance because it's on the different color so the only piece that is left is the king. So king should come to e3 and then it will be able to push d4. But black will need to demonstrate a little attention here because uh, let's say if he goes immediately king d6, uh, white simply can attack this pawn and no, no way to progress here. Uh, because uh, what to do? c3 does work again and if he will play d3 then king c3 and unfortunately for black his king is very far away placed and pawns are starting just hanging and they will be lost at least one of them so it is easy, easily making draw for white uh, so uh, first of all after bishop g6 what black needs to do is that he needs to control these squares to limit white king's potential here, possibilities. So, first of all, we play, black plays king d8, bishop d8, sorry. Uh, white keeps waiting. He, the, the bishop should keep standing on this diagonal, otherwise d3 and black is just winning. Bishop a5. Now, white still waiting, and king d6. Okay, uh, it makes no sense to play king d5 of course here because it's just a check and unfortunately black needs to go back to c5 square. So obviously black needs to make this maneuver. King d6, king um, e5, king f4, king e3 and after that only advance uh, pawn on d3 and by the way bishop is just placed perfectly here. If now white will play bishop f7 of course this recheck is already working and no access to those important squares for white king. Uh, bishop uh, h7 still waiting, king e5, bishop g6, king f4, and now just if black will be able to play this uh, king e3 and push the pawns, the game is over. So maybe it's the last, last chance to try to attack the pawn c4, but again it does work. This recheck. Unfortunately, again and again, there's no king c3 move. King has to go back. So now black has c3 and just, just king came in time. So pawns keep advancing and no blocking construction for white. So let's go to the beginning. And we already mentioned and we already know that the move that makes a draw is bishop e2. 
with the same idea to stop this tree, but the additional little detail and very important detail is that this bishop is going to attack the pawn c4 at the same time. So we now came to the uh, understanding of the activity again. We, we mentioned this, we were talking about this in our previous lessons and every time and every time we see this idea. It's very important to be active and the most uh, natural activity, most powerful activity is not just mm, bringing the piece in the center. No, it's having the target to pressure. So this, this immediately limits the opponent's possibilities because he needs to uh, defend his, his weakness that is under the pressure, that is the attack. This is the natural activity. So white not only stops this tree but also is keeping the eye over the over this c4 pawn and it simply makes impossible any maneuver from the king to the square to support this re. So now all white needs to do is to play bishop f1 and bishop e2, keep attacking this pawn and avoiding this re at once. As black bishop is the is of the different color, uh, he cannot do anything and it's very easy draw instead of losing after bishop g6. So very important theoretical position and we have to simply remember these ideas. Now let's see another example. Uh, it's, it's just the same position, almost the same position. The only problem is that black is just one more horizontal advanced than in the previous example. So is this enough to win the game? Yes. Because white is just in the Sukhswank. Okay, white will play bishop f1, still to, to to stop the pawn e2. But now, let's say after bishop a5, uh, there is no square bishop um, g0. There is no enough space simply at the, at the board, so white is in the sukswang, or bishop has to go out here and allow e2, or bishop has to go to c, c1 and again allow e2. So when we try to create this blocking construction we have to do it as soon as possible because if we will be we, we will allow to the opponent to push the pawns enough far away then maybe it will be late only exception is when we are in the corner uh, again okay white has to play bishop c1 b3 and keep waiting here to stop b2 move so bishop cannot move, king b1 should be played, and it looks like that after bishop g6 check, king a1, and just any move, something like bishop f5, white is again in a sukswang. King doesn't have a moves, and when bishop goes out, b2 wins. But the difference is uh, the place of the white's king. We are in the corner. So now we have saving bishop takes a3 sacrifice and after king takes a3 it just stalemate so this is this is just a little exception but if we are able to to create defensive structure blocking structure on the earlier stages it's better let's avoid mm, advancing of the opponent's pawns okay and now i i just wanted to show you example from my own game that I have saved thanks to knowing these theoretical ideas. I was playing against a uh, very strong grandmaster uh, Gelashvili and uh, well as we see black is just a pawn down and uh, white has this pair of pawns here and step by step he's planning to push them, uh, activate the king and probably it looks like the black's future is very very sad but I realized that to make a draw I need to just exchange the rooks at any price because exactly in the bishop endgame bishops of the different color I have the chances to save the game so at any price so let's play b5 why just decided to take this pawn? Well, if you will play a5, then just bishop c3, and we will win this pawn, and it's just equality. Black is not a pawn down anymore. So, white took on b5. 
he started to advance the king but let's go okay I'm gonna put push this pawn as far as possible to force bishop takes b3 and rook exchanging or just uh, I will go with till b2 and then then maybe white will have other type of problems because if pawn will arrive to b2 black will already have some tactical strikes like rook takes d5 here so uh, white played king d4 okay I was also calculating here maybe he would try that this g4 move but we have the same plan b3 maybe it's even possible to take on g5 but there's no need to play um, and game rook against rook and the bishop it's better to play just bishop c3 b2 and now white is in a, some kind of trouble because rook take, take, takes d5 is coming okay still f6 check could be played king f8 king e4 avoiding obviously uh, rook takes d5 but then check a rook e1 anyway it's about the exchange of the rooks and this pawn uh, is, is really very important uh, resource that destroys white's concentration on the on the king side so rook takes bishop takes king c2 and now just black takes this white pawns and it's easy draw so what was played in the game just king e4 but anyway we continue our uh, maneuver with the pawn so white finally took here and with the price of one more pawn I was able to exchange the rooks and now all I need to do is just wait like this bishop e7 uh, bishop e7 <coughs> bishop d8 <coughs> sorry uh, bishop f6 bishop e7 bishop d8 bishop f6 did the same same maneuvers because okay white can push here white can still advance the pawns white can play king f5 we can play king g4 bishop e7 but that's it no more progress is possible from the white side here because uh, I'm keeping the eye with the bishop here and stopping f3 and white bishop is useless simply because it's of the another color so we saw this is the theoretical position of the previous example okay let's go to take a look at the almost uh, same kind type of position but now the problem is that there are two more pawns on the queen side so I cannot say that oh I'm gonna play bishop f7 king h7 and make a draw by moving bishop e8 bishop f7 because what white will do in this case is that just king h4 g5 g6 and after sacrificing of my bishop there the, the, the steal before pawn is alive so this defensive plan of bishop sacrifice for two pawn is not working simply so what we have to do it looks like just losing position only thing that black could try as we mentioned in the beginning is activity natural activity targeting something pressuring something and using all our resources that we have which resources black has here in this position bishop and the king okay so bishop d1 immediately attacking the target the most important philosophy here activity uh, now King h4 obviously white protected this pawn and he wants to push g5 and now I cannot imagine any more useful position for my bishop it's time to activate the king so King f7 f5 King e6 by the way very often uh, my pupils are saying here su suggesting king h7 move but I really don't like this move and this idea because it's not an activity king is going just in the corner and still doesn't stop anything here so of course we have to centralize the king so g5 doesn't give anything just um, king g5 because uh, well I'm keep waiting and white king blocks his own pawn chain so this would not be very smart g5 king d6 and now what to do if white plays h6 then we just go back through to block here everything on the white squares and king f7 so it looks like 
white just need to play g6 and then king g5. But exactly now, black king just comes in time on f5, limiting the white king and this maximal activity that black started to demonstrate here is enough to save the half point. Because uh, bishop keeps attacking pawn h5, so it's limiting white king because no, no other maneuvers are possible. Pawn advance is also impossible because just pawn is uh, hanging here. And well, if g7 will be played, then just bishop b3 and blocking, sorry, oops, blocking on the white squares. h6, king g6, bishop b3, king h7, and that's it. And pawn b5, pawn b5, of course, will be protected with the bishop c4 here. So even here, even with the additional material, the board, the natural activity, targeting something, attacking something, and also centralizing my king, was enough to save the half point. Okay, now we see a very famous example. Uh, white is just one pawn up, but now d3 and d4 pawns are really very powerful resources here. And why decided to play rook c7? Just he decided to play rook c7 and then by king f2, king e3, d4, d5, king d4 and step by step win the game because okay probably black will be forced to sacrifice the bishop for those pair of pawns but then there are still a lot of other pawns at the board. But in truth, this, this is the mistake. Uh, the winning plan, the winning move for white would be just the king f2. First starting to come here to activate the king and using the moment that it's not possible rook takes d3 because of rook takes, uh, sorry, rook c7 check. What happened after rook c7? Rook takes, bishop takes and suddenly black realizes his uh, th this philosophy that we were talking about, right? The blocking structures, blocking on the color of my bishop, and then opponent's bishop is useless because it's of the different color. So b4, sacrifice of one more pawn. Material is not important. Important is the concept of the play. Pawn takes, and what I have to do is to push white pawns on dark squares. And now I'm able to block them on the light squares. So it's easy to draw now. King f2, h5, king here, just a6. So as we see, okay, if king g5, black keeps waiting and again keeps waiting. So there's no way to progress here. Okay. <clears throat> and now let's see probably the last very important idea for this type of positions um, this is the this is called like trousers the strategy of the trousers um, black is winning in this position but after first look it looks like wow and how right because uh, the pawns even are equal and we have different type of color, different colored bishops. So if sometimes I'm able to save the game without three pawns, then with the equal number of the pawns, why should I lose? But as we mentioned, <clears throat> it's important subject is the concept, not the material. And the strategy of these trousers allows black to create too many passed pawns. So, so to win the game here, actually, the player needs not uh, just a few extra pawns, but he really needs few, at least two passed pawns. And those two passed pawns, it maybe would sound a little bit funny, but they need to be separated. As more separated they are, more chances we have to win the game, because when they are going together, there's no big space between them and it's easier to block them. 
on the color that the opponent needs to do to, to, to block them, right? So when they are separated, king and the bishop coordination is really bad. They are far away played from each other, placed from each other, and well, opponent's king always goes to the or our king always goes to the pawn which is blocked with the bishop. And no way to to help with the king to the bishop because king is in another corner of the position to block another passed pawn. So now black has one passed pawn g3, so we need another one. So the winning move is b5. Pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and c4. Uh, well, now white has even one extra pawn, but now we see the philosophy of the trousers. Uh, white pass pawns are blocked on the one diagonal. Okay, so it's very comfortable for the bishop, and also bishop is protecting his own pass pawn on the same diagonal. So white pawns are just helpless here. But what about black pass pawns? They are not on the one diagonal. White bishop simply cannot block them by taking one diagonal. It's like a trousers. Let's imagine let's imagine that white bishop should stand on e4 to keep blocking both of the passed pawns. But still it's not enough because they are two different diagonals and it looks like trousers, right? So one is going here, another going is here and bishop is suffering because uh, it's it's very tough to stop all the pawns there. So what is the winning plan? King d6, king c5, king b4, supporting the pawn which is going to be blocked with the bishop. And no help from the king because then I will push my another pawn when king will go in a far away from the g-passed pawn. And that's it. Draw the strategy and white pawns are very very weak because there's no trouser there's one diagonal to stop them okay now another example from the very famous game Botwinik was playing with the white oh sorry with the black black is a pawn up but again and again in in a, in a the, this type of end games when we say the player is a pawn up it, it doesn't mean too much right it's important what exactly happens in the position so uh, okay so far black has one pass pawn on b3 uh, but oh, yes okay still it cannot be taken d4 check and then probably black wins however after some time for example white could play bishop d4 to black this pawn to block this pawn d5 and to take this b3 pawn later okay so if black attacks for example this um, pawn h4 then bishop e7 will, will be played so uh, so far it looks like there's no progress here but Botwinik realizes that to win this game, he needs to create two passed pawns. One problem, one passed pawn is not enough. Where he can create another passed pawn? Probably on the king side. But how to do this? If every time I play king g4, bishop comes to protect this pawn h4. Well, first of all, g5. Now, if pawn h takes, then passed pawn is already at the board. So it's logical that uh, f takes g5 was played. And now d4 check. Why another sacrifice of the pawn? It's because we need to keep alive this far away passed pawn on b3. It's very important. So I just don't need my d5 pawn. Okay, now bishop takes d4. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous videos too, it doesn't matter, we are just one move away to give a checkmate or what else is happening at the board. We just need to stay cold-blooded, stay concentrated till the last moment when opponent stops the clock. 
we should not relax. Uh, okay, maybe many professional players also know this, but it's a psychological moment. Sometimes we relax anyway. We have to try to limit this uh, mental, psychological problem, typological mistake in our games. I remember that few years ago I was playing in uh, one tournament and I was playing about um, five hours and finally got very similar position than this and all I need to do is to just take the pawn of the opponent and get second pass pawn and it was easily winning position so it's really very similar to this situation and I decided I thought that that's it finally for, for in, in the end I'm able to win this game and I played quickly the last move to take this pawn and I missed a very little logical resource of the opponent and he drew the game so here also so how are we gonna take this h4 pawn that's the question so it looks like that oh doesn't matter I don't know king g4 or, or king g3 and taking these pawns right this pawn but it's really matter because if black will play now king g4 this is a draw. This is something similar that happened to me. White has d5 move, sacrifice to attack the bishop and win the tempo. And now this diagonal is free. Bishop goes to f2, protects h4, most important pawn at the board, and there's no way to win the game with the black. Because now there's no there are no two pass pawns. And one pawn, one pawn is easily blocked with the king. So, to win this game, black needs to play king g3. Exactly, king g3. And now, okay, white could play d5 if he wants, but there's no move bishop f2. And black guarantees uh, that he will take h4 pawn and get another pass pawn at the board. So, in the game it was played something like bishop a3, as I remember. King takes here. And well, it is the winning position because let's say g6, uh, bishop, uh, sorry, king, king, king g3. I don't know, king d3, h4, king g2, king g2, and th there's no way to stop my pass pawns. While white's pass pawns are not dangerous because they are blocked on the one diagonal but the location of the black passed pawns are creating trousers they are very far away placed pawns and no way to to stop them together working with the king and the bishop white king and the bishop should be separated stopping those pawns so let's take a look at one more example and probably this will be this will be a tough example for you. Uh, black is a pawn down, but again, it's not about not just about the material. Uh, potentially, white can create a pass pawn on the queen side, uh, and his task is to create another pass pawn or win something on the king side using a little bit poor pawn chain of the black player here on this in this area okay so for example a defensive structure like uh, bishop g6 doesn't help because white will play king g3 king f4 king g5 then h4 h5 will push away this bishop and start um, eating opponents pawns here and if you will be able to create a pass pawn on the king side plus another potential pass pawn on the queen side uh, so it's a winning position of course for black so uh, what black should do to save the, the, the half point here I give you time to find try to find it yourself you can stop the video here I will just give you a little hint is that only activity can help the black player here to save the game to have a target to attack okay I hope you find the correct plan the correct plan is playing Bishop b5 
I'm going to target these pawns. Now after king g3, bishop f1, white cannot really progress on the king side because if we play h4, h5, king f4, bishop takes g2, king f5 and bishop f3, we see that black where Relic was able to create the blocking structure which cannot be destroyed. Okay, white still still can get one pass pawn on the queen side, but this is just one pass pawn. That's all. Black will stop that pawn with the king, and the king side is unbreakable. Okay, what else we could recommend to the white player? Maybe g4 immediately. But also here, just pawn takes, bishop here. And bishop f3, okay. King f4, just king b7, g5, king c6, uh, king g5, bishop g2, king f6, bishop h3. I'm waiting when finally white king will attack the pawn g7, uh, and I will be able to put my bishop on g6. And again, this is unbreakable chain where white cannot create the pass pawn that's all and we can easily deal with only one pass pawn on the king side well i hope i gave you useful information about the end games with the different colored bishops about trousers that we need to have separated pass pawns about concept that material may be less important here than the philosophy, than the idea of the structure. And so to save the game very often to the weak side, for the weak side, um, um, require this to demonstrate the activity. And with, as we mentioned in er, er, almost every lesson, the activity is actually to target something that limits opponent because he needs to protect the target, uh, sort that, that weakness, and he has really less possibilities, less maneuvers because he tied up with the protecting job. So I hope these hints will help you to play better and save uh, many half points in your games or avoid loss of those half points. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.